Can you guess what this is? Well, the title of the video is already a spoiler, but this is called a fuel cell. Basically, it generates electricity using some fuel in a chemical reaction. And to be more specific, this fuel cell is using hydrogen and oxygen. This bubbly process that you are now seeing on the screen could actually end up into electrical energy and spin an electric motor, for example. And by the way, this energy could also do this. So be careful with that. But anyway, in this video I want to explain to you the entire process of getting energy from water. And like that you should understand how the hydrogen car works and how the fuel cell could generate electrical energy. I promise you this will be a very interesting experiment. So let's get started. Ok, so for today's experiment I will use two devices. One is the fuel cell and the other one is the electrolysis device. And don't worry, I'll go over each one in a moment. But you see, a hydrogen vehicle could be of two types, with combustion or electric. But before I explain you the differences, just a quick word from our sponsor. Hey guys, PCBWay is sponsoring this video and let me just tell about their services. For example, look how awesome their prototyping PCBs are. And you can get this for only $5. They are so professional and they will make your project work a lot better. And to order such PCBs, you only need a few minutes on their website, where you can select any configuration that you want for your boards. Along with that, you can also order the SND stencil for soldering the components using solder paste. And you can also use their services for flexible PCBs and create some unique projects. And if you want to make your project start to finish, you can get the PCBs assembled together with the mold injected part or maybe 3D printed, metal parts or other CNC services all with PCB way. Ok guys, so as I was telling you, hydrogen cars could work with a combustion engine or an electric motor. Hydrogen is quite explosive and energy dense. So you could use it just as a gasoline motor and create control explosions, moving pistons and so on, just as a normal combustion motor, but adapted to hydrogen. But that is not very efficient actually is less efficient than a gasoline motor. But on the other side, instead of combustion with hydrogen, we can use the fuel cell, which is 3 times more efficient than a combustion engine. And basically, this type of car is exactly as any other electric car, such as the Tesla cars. But instead of using rechargeable batteries, in this case, it uses a hydrogen fuel cell to create electrical energy. We store the hydrogen in a high pressure tank. We feed it to the fuel cell, it creates energy and also as a waste, it creates water. The energy is then passed to the ESC and the electric motor and that's how it works, more or less. But how does the fuel cell work? And how can we obtain hydrogen efficiently and cost effective? Well, let's go step by step and we start with the electrolysis device. And I bought this for only 7 euros from AliExpress, but you could easily make a homemade one if you want, using some plastic containers and some metal electrodes. And anyway, this device has two metal rods where we supply the power, positive and negative, for the anode and cathode. And we fill this with water, and this device will split the water molecules. And what is water made of? Well, hydrogen and oxygen, which is exactly what we need. In order to split the atoms, current must pass through the water from one electrode to the other one, so we can't use normal water. I mean, we could, but it's not conductive enough. And to fix that, we add some sodium hydroxide, to act as a good electrolyte, so we would have a better flow of ions between the anode and the cathode. And you can get this for just a few dollars from Amazon, but make sure that you won't get in contact with it, otherwise it will burn your skin. And before we make the experiment, let me show to you how electrolysis works. We have a plastic container and two electrodes. We apply positive at this electrode and negative at this one. Then we add water. We also add some sodium hydroxide, so now the water is conductive enough, so big current flow is created between the electrodes. And when the current passes, the ions migrate to the electrode with the opposite charge. At the cathode, the
the sodium ions will gain electrons and are reduced to form sodium metal. The sodium ions will go towards the cathode and the hydroxide ions will go towards the anode. The hydrogen ions from the water also gain some electrons and they are reduced to form hydrogen gas or H2. And on the other side at the anode the hydroxide ions will lose electrons and are oxidized to form oxygen gas O2 and also water H2O. So overall the electrolysis of sodium hydroxide in water produces sodium metal, hydrogen gas, oxygen gas and water. The sodium metal and the hydrogen gas are produced at the cathode, while the oxygen gas and the water are produced at the anode. So that's how we can get hydrogen and oxygen. So as you can see this device has two electrodes and these are into separate containers. Water has connections on the lower part, but by having the electrodes in separate containers, we ensure that we will only have hydrogen here and oxygen here. Because mixing hydrogen and oxygen in a confined container is quite dangerous, because that mix is highly explosive. So let's make the entire process. In a plastic container I mix the water with some sodium hydroxide. So mix it well. I also changed the rubber tubes with some longer ones and also added these plastic valves. I then add that water mixture to the electrolysis device. I connect power from my power supply. I will apply around 20 volts. And the moment I connect the power we can already see some bubbles coming out, hydrogen on one side and oxygen on the other side. And we can see how the pressure is pushing the water downwards. And just to show to you that this is hydrogen, I get some soap and water. And I create a bubble using the hydrogen gas. And to make it explosive, I also add some oxygen from the other tube. And now I light it up. Damn. Okay, let's see it one more time. So guys that was a very strong bang, hydrogen has a lot of energy and could be dangerous, especially when mixed with oxygen. Anyway we now have the hydrogen and the oxygen, so let's add the fuel cell to this setup. And by the way the brown color stuff inside of the water could be manganese dioxide that is formed as a residue. Ok so the fuel cell has 4 inputs or outputs. Two on one side and two more on the other side. We connect the O2 on the cathode, so the side with the black perimeter. On the other side we connect the H2, the side with the red perimeter. And during the chemical reaction water will be produced and we can use the other two outputs to remove that water, but for the experiment I will first try to close those outputs using these rubber plugs. And to use them better I will use some hot glue and fix them in place on a piece of wood board. And now they are a lot easier to use. The fuel cell has an anode and a cathode, just as a normal battery. And in the middle, in between, we have a membrane which will be the electrolyte. So the hydrogen is fed into the anode compartment of the fuel cell, while the oxygen is fed into the cathode compartment. The anode and the cathode are separated by this electrolyte membrane that allows the ions to pass through, but not the electrons. At the anode the hydrogen molecules are split into protons H+, and electrons E-, in a process that is called oxidation. So the protons are released into the electrolyte, while the electrons are traveling through the external circuit of the cathode, creating a flow of electrical current. And that's how we can create our electrical energy. And meanwhile at the cathode, the oxygen molecules react with the protons and the electrons that have traveled through the external circuit from the anode. And this process is called reduction and produces water or H2O and releases additional electrons. This is similar to a battery but is using hydrogen and oxygen. 
and also compared with a normal battery, a fuel cell needs a constant fuel in order to work. And it's not like a rechargeable battery. That's why it's called a fuel cell and not a battery cell. Ok, so now that we know how both devices work, let's assemble the final setup. So the electrolysis device will create hydrogen and oxygen. And that is fed into the fuel cell and used to create electrical energy at these two metal pins. At the output I want to add as a load a small electric motor, so we could see its rotation. And I also want to add a basic voltmeter and an ammeter, to measure the voltage and the current. I use the same aquarium rubber tubes to connect the gases, and I also use those small plastic valves. The voltmeter is connected in parallel to the fuel cell, and the ammeter is connected in series with the electrical motor. And the experiment setup is ready. So I add the sodium hydroxide water once again into the electrolysis device. I first supply power to the electrolysis process. And we can see how the hydrogen and the oxygen volume is going up, because the small valves are closed. And for this to work we need to take out the yellow rubber caps so the gases could flow, I didn't knew that. So I take those out and I open the valves and the fuel cell is now fed with gases, and just like that the motor starts to spin. I measure a current flow of around 20 mA without a load, but when I start the motor with my hand, we get up to 50 mA at a voltage of 1 volt. So that's around 50 mW of power. But obviously an electric car would use some higher quality fuel cells and a lot more than just one. Actually, if you want, you could buy stack together some fuel cells from Aliexpress as well, but those are too expensive for a simple experiment. But like that you could create enough voltage and current to be able to charge an electric car. And that's how they work. And usually the efficiency of this process from electrical power to gas, then to liquid hydrogen and then back to electrical power is around 60%, which is not that bad is still better than a normal gasoline combustion engine. And the electric motors could get up to 80 or 90% efficiency, compared with only 20 or 30% efficiency for the gasoline combustion motors. And personally I see a good future for the hydrogen electric cars. All we need is a good and safe hydrogen network to supply all the cars around the world, and that's the difficult part. So now you should know how the hydrogen cars work how the electrolysis is made and how a fuel cell could create electrical power using hydrogen. I hope that you have learned something new and if so, consider giving me a like or comment below. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys, so that was another project and I hope that you like it. As you all know, to buy all these modules, a huge help from you is from Patreon. So if you want to support me, you can support me there, but also just commenting below, giving me a like or sharing this video, it will also support my channel. So thank you very much to all my patrons and to you guys.